Hey, welcome to a deep dive on Jazzy128. Let's get into it. So typically when I uh, upload a YouTube video, I, I do post it on my eToro page. In the last video I did, um, I was putting some funds onto Jazzy128 and Hugo. As soon as I posted the video onto eToro, in the same day, uh, Jazzy did this post here. Uh, a big shout out to Moff for his work on reviewing our popular investors on YouTube channel. Uh, do check it out. And then he gives the link here. Find my review starting in six minutes. Now, this post by Jazzy um, sharing my post and give me a shout out. Um, call me by surprise. Um, you know, I've, I've only been doing this since January 2020, and I've never had this, you know, kindness, exposure, shout out sort of thing. It, you know, I, I felt really humbled and really appreciated it. Um, you know, I did leave a comment as well saying, you know, thank you. I'm not going to go into it because it gets a bit uh, sappy, soppy. So, but um, yeah, I, I, I was blown away by by his generosity to to give me a shout out <clears throat> to give me a shout out like that, you know. Um, but one thing that got me was um, he says, "Find my review at six minutes mark on my video," um, and I kind of felt like I cheated him a bit because it's not really a review. It's um, I'm kind of like skimming over a bunch of traders going into their stats real quick. So that kind of gave me the inspiration to start a new mini series, which I'm calling Deep Dive. And I'm gonna be dedicating a whole video to a trader doing a deep dive into their bio, their stats, what they're currently doing on their portfolio and comparing their, their, well, their year-long chart to the NASDAQ 100 chart. So let's get right into it. Okay, we'll check out his, uh, his bio first. So to recap, his name is Jazzy128. He's got a red star, and his real name is Adam Freno, or Freno, Freno, Freno. What, the red, what is a red star? What does that mean? Let's go to eToro's popular investment program. So here, if you have a blue star next to your name, you are a cadet, um, a minimum AUM of 500, minimum equity of 1,000. Champion is 400 to 800 monthly uh, payment to yourself for being at a champion level, which is what Adam is, uh, or Jazzy128. He is a champion, red star. Um, but I'll just leave this here. I don't want to read out every single word, but yeah, this is this is the the popular investor program, which eToro has. The higher you go, go from blue, red, green to black. Um, you know, the higher AUM that you get and the, the, the more equity that you have and put on, um, the more the more money that eToro will give you. Um, and that's, that's essentially it. So Jazzy is a, a champion, a red star. So let's have a look here. So at the moment, he has a risk score of six out of 10. Um, he advises to copy open trade, stay invested for as long as possible. The current average copy mark is $800, minimum 350. And we'll come back to that in a second, the minimum 350. Read the pinned post. This is advertising um, a website there. He joined eToro in April as a part of his research project, <clears throat> which he was re reviewing stock brokers. eToro came out on top, which I personally uh, agree with. Um, I have developed high growth, low dividend, diversified strategy that uh, consistently outperforms NASDAQ 100, which we will compare against in this video. All investment decisions are backed by thorough research. How do I plan to outperform NASDAQ 100, he says through holding high growth market disruptors, by being on a consistent lookout for new opportunities, through reacting to market sentiments and change in fundamentals. 
by staying emotionless in red days. Good. It's hard to be emotionless when it comes to trading. I, I know. <laughs> what about the risks? Expect a lot of volatility, but rest assured, hold long term and you'll be rewarded. Good. It's got 1,400 followers and 122 copiers. So 120 people have invested their money into Jazzy. Let's see how often he posts. So his pinned post is six months ago, saying that every month is prof prof every month has been profitable, which it has been, as you can see here. Started in April, all green statistics. His goal is to outperform NASDAQ 100. Uh, da -da -da -da, no FOMO, good. Uh, that's fear of missing out, just in case you didn't know, which you probably do. Da -da 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 -da. There's a lot of text, but I mean, that's why it's a pin post, I guess. So 21 hours ago, he last posted. And then a day ago, no, a day ago, which was the post he shared on my video. And two days, and two days, and three days, and three days, and three days. So he's very on top of the the social aspect of eToro. He's letting his followers and copiers know what's going on at all times. He is on it. He's not waiting five months until he says, hi, I'm here. He's not waiting two months. He is very on top of it. Now we'll go into the stats. Okay, so he's only been trading this year in 2020. There's no historical data for 2019 and backwards, 2018, so on. He's only started in April. So there's a, a tiny green there, which from this distance just looks like um, the first three months where he hasn't started. But now there's a little, there's a little win there. So he's been trading for nine months and he currently has a profit of 59%, 0.57. There is no red months. And the Corona related downs uh, for September and October, which caused quite a few traders to have a negative month for either September, October or both. Jazzy has done very well, in my opinion. He has not had a red month in there. He's kept it above green. As I mentioned before, 120 copiers with a nice incline. It's not a straight up vertical line, which can be, which can be indicated that maybe the trader was um, promoted by eToro on their copy people tab. And then that typically makes the, the incline on the graph of copiers relatively straight up. This is all organic, 122. 216 total trades in nine months. 85% profitable. 86% of his trades are in stocks. 11% are in ETFs. And people, 1.3%. So he has copied someone before. He's not currently copying anyone. Six trades per week, three months average holding time, um, active since the 18th of April. Okay, so it was quite late into April, which may help towards why it's such a, a low green. And 66.67 profitable weeks. Okay, so his daily drawdown is minus 6.23%. His weekly drawdown is minus 9.97%. And yearly drawdown, or the last nine months, is minus 10.72%. Just to recap quickly what drawdown means. It doesn't necessarily mean that his worst trade in the year was minus 10%. He didn't lose 10% of his uh, pro pro uh, portfolio. As you can see, he has, hasn't has lost any money. It's all green. He has, it hasn't been recorded on his graph that he's lost 10% or nine 
or even six. What it means is that whatever he was holding, whether it be one, two, or 50 trades, if they all, at least one of the, 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 the things that he was trading in the year or in the last nine months has hit minus 10%. Hello? Hello? Spam caller. Fantastic. Interrupted my video. So yeah, minus 10% doesn't mean that he's, he's lost the 10%. It just mm -hmm. means whatever trade he has, it's, it's gone into negative whilst he's still holding it to the minus 10% mark. Um, and then it's either pulled back into positive and then closed it, or maybe he's held it much more long-term because it's not going up anytime soon and he's added other trades and they've helped push that average up. Um, so it's no longer minus 10%. It's gone into the green, which then shows here because he hasn't lost anything for the year. Okay, let's have a look at what Jazzy is doing in his portfolio as of right now. Today is the 26th of December, 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's interesting. In my previous video, I was a bit concerned with um, a trader called, Z Z I think it was Zafasu. I believe it is him who I was looking at. And I was mentioning that he had quite a few that was over 100% and one was even 1,000%. Uh, for Jazzy, there is quite a lot that's really, really high. So that does worry me a little bit. Um, I wonder how often he's closing those. Hopefully he's not just holding them forever and that he's sort of aware that he has people copying him and they need Jazzy to close the trades really to, to help build all the people that's copying him to build their portfolios and then in turn build Jazzy's popular investor account. So it's got 65 trades open, which is good in my opinion, the more the better, uh, better risk management. Um, let's have a look at the invested. Okay, personally, I prefer it if a trader doesn't have maybe over 30% in one trade. Um, ideally, I like it 10 or less. Um, so to have starting as his highest percentage trade is 4% um, of his equity. Equity. That's uh, really good in my opinion. And just going all the way down through those 65 trades. So generally for dra Jazzy, he can get away with being copied with $200 as a minimum from the research that I've undertaken. Except for this, this one here, Lemonade Inc. That one's below 0 0.5. So in order to copy that trade as well, you would need to put on more than 200. You'd need uh, to put on 200 let's say $260 just to get that trade as well. So it covers it. Okay, so just to recap, um, the, the minimum that you can put on Jazzy is $200, but you will miss out on that, that last trade that you had, the Lemonade Inc., um, in which case $260 would be the minimum. But according to Jazzy, the minimum would be 350. So obviously he knows better than I do. Maybe he's got plans for 2021 where he's gonna shrink some of his uh, trade sizes so I'd say, at least for now, you can do 200, but somewhere between $200 and $350 uh, in my personal opinion. Okay, now we're gonna look at how he's comparing to the, the NASDAQ 100 chart. Okay, so I put a chart on the screen here. 
starting from the beginning of 2020 to now, which is the 26th of December. This black line here, the black chart rather, represents uh, NASDAQ 100. Okay. And the green line represents Jazzy, how he's comparing to the NASDAQ 100. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at what NASDAQ actually means. So the NASDAQ 100 index was founded by NASDAQ on January 31, 1985. And it's a stock market index comprised of um, 100 of the largest companies traded on the NASDAQ based on market capitalization. So it's essentially, um, as you see here, USA, 100 largest non-financial companies. So basically it's, it's a great comparison to sort of compare traders with. Many traders try to outperform the NASDAQ because that's a sort of a fundamental measuring device, if you like. So as you can see here, if we go across the whole year, so from the start of 2020 to the end, which isn't really fair on Jazzy as he only started in April, April 20th, it looks like. But if he was to start here, you can see that he's shadowing the NASDAQ quite well here. And then in June, late June, he does underperform for the NASDAQ until he gets to the 1st of October. And then he starts outperforming it. And quite a lot from October, November-ish onwards up until now. But if we were to pull this back to when he actually started, so as you can see as well, there was a nice, if he had started before when he did on uh, the 18th, 20th of April, he would have had a nice opportunity here when the NASDAQ dipped, he could have you know, gone above that. So that's a bit unfortunate for this particular comparison. So let's pull that all the way back. And there we go. So this is the NASDAQ um, in comparison to when Jazzy started. So underperforming, what well, shadows a little bit there, underperforms um, until he gets to the 6th of October. And then he, then he starts bringing it a lot more in October and November. I think he's done very well. I'm sure that's going to show in 2021. I'm sure when we look at this, if we look at this graph again, at the end of 2021, it'd show much better performance as Jazzy did start in late April. Okay, so for this next bit, we want to see how often the trader closes their trades. Um, and then whatever percentage that is, that's now yours. That gets put back onto um, the trader that you're you're trading with. Um, so it's essentially like uh, building... Like a like a snowball effect, and you're you're harvesting these uh, these dollar crops, and you're putting it back onto yourself, and it's forever growing. Um, that is a new key thing that I like to look out for uh, in a trader. So let's have a, a quick look and compare with Jazzy. Okay, so we're going to use Jane Nemesis as, as an example here. Um, we're going to use the last three months of data. So we say that's break even. Uh, round that to seventeen and nine. So 17 and 9 is 26%. So that's what he's gained, whether it's open trades or closed trades. That's the total what he's gained in three months, 26%. Okay, so if we go to portfolio and then history. I've already set it to three months here. Um, he's got 485 trades closed in three months, 84% profitable closed trades in three months. Um, and then the key thing here is 24% has been closed. He's, he's closed 24% um, in three months. 24% out of a possible 26%, which is ridiculously high in a good way um, because he's, he's essentially harvesting all of those trades, closing them, and then putting all that money back on. And, you know, that to me, that's, that's a really good attribute to have as a trader to frequently close the trades so that it snowballs and gets bigger. Okay, so let's have a look how Jazzy um, is in comparison. So we'll do the last three months again. So we do 
21 plus nine and a three. So 33% in three months. Okay. In three months. Okay, so 50 trades in three months, 80% profitable. 4.5% out of a possible 33%. So he may have, he may well have made thirty three percent in three months, but he's only closed four and a half percent. So as of right now, you're only getting you know just under five percent of that thirty three percent back into Jazzy as a trader in order to make more money. So based on this comparison between Jay and Jazzy for a three month period. Um, I, I'll be honest, I would like to see, um, you know, a, a lot higher closing rate um, in order to have that snowball effect and harvest those crops, if you like, harvest the money and put it back into him, uh, into the trader. Okay, so these are the final statistics or the, the final review, if you like, of Jazzy. So for social slash informative, um, which is based on how often he interacts with um, his copiers, um, you know, how often he uh, adds posts to his page. Um, it's got a, a nine out of 10, in my opinion. Um, this one in particular, compared to the others, is more of a guesstimate. There isn't like a set formula that I can sort of replicate. Um, I mean, from the ones that we looked at, he's doing it at, at, on average once a day, maybe even twice a day. So uh, I think a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 for being informative to his copiers and you know having a general sense of uh, socialness, um, very high marks. It's, he's got that going for him. For the statistics, um, he's currently on 40, uh, 59, about 59% uh, for the last nine months. So what I've done is I've divided, I'll uh, try to find an average. So divide 59 uh, by nine to get about 6.5. Um, so then you do 6.5 times three for the first three months that he's missing, which is about 19.66. So in his benefit, I'll round up to 20. So it's, it's more or less 20 uh, plus uh, 59. So it's about 79. So you know, according to this, you know, average uh, sum that I've done, it would be about 79% he would have made for the year if he had started in January in this hypothetical. Um, I'm basically just making up the data because there wasn't any for the first three months. So round that up, that's a, an eight, 80%, 80% uh, profit, 80% profit for the year. So he gets an eight out of 10. If there's someone with 60% uh, profit for the year, they get a, a six out of 10. Um, that's just how I'm doing it. If they got 100% or over 100% for the year, it'd be a 10 out of 10 and so on. For the, the portfolio quantity, uh, a seven out of 10. The portfolio slash how many uh, is based on quantity. So if they had five, uh, items that there is trading, I'd consider that low, so maybe a, a one out of 10. Um, if they had somewhere around 100 items that they're trading, then I'd consider that very high, and they'd get a, a, a 10 out of 10. Um, so as, as Jazzy has got uh, 65 items that he's currently trading, um, for portfolio quantity, he gets a, a seven out of 10, which is rounded up to 65 to 70, so a seven out of 10. Risk management, um, so, for example, if the highest percentage trade that someone was trading was about 30% or over 30%, I would consider that a like a 0 or a 1 out of 10 because it's just too risky having 30% of your equity in one trade. Um, and then on the flip side of that, having about 3% or less than 3% as your highest, biggest trade get like a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. So as Jazzy has got uh, three, I think 3.97% was his highest trade. And then it go, you know, goes all the way down to 0.39%. 
he gets a very high score for the risk management, so a 9 out of 10. Drawdown gets an 8 out of 10. Um, his yearly drawdown is minus 10.72%. And how I've worked this out uh, for this particular one, Jazzy, and in the future, um, I'm going to have minus 30% for a, a yearly drawdown as the maximum. So if uh, I review a trade that has minus 30% annual drawdown, uh, that would be considered a zero. Um, if he has a minus 5% yearly drawdown, that'd be considered a 10. So yeah, basically just do the mass. It's, it's, it's an eight based on those figures. The affordability, uh, nine out of 10. So how I've done this is if someone can be copied with $200 based on everything they're currently trading, that'd be considered a 10 out of 10 because it's very affordable. You can do it with the minimum, which is $200. Um, if they take $1,200 plus uh, to copy all the trades, that would be considered a zero or a one. So as um, Jazzy, to copy, <laughs> to copy everything, including that newest Lemonade Ink one, um, that really is the only thing that's pushing it over the 200. It's pushing it to about 260, but to be safe, uh, to make sure that you cover all the, um, you know, all the, 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 the spreads, the eToro fees and such, uh, I'd round it up to 300. So say $300 is a minimum, really. $200 would be a 10 out of 10. So as he takes, as he needs $300, he goes down one to nine out of 10. Reinvesting, right? This is the only one where Jazzy falls short. He's stayed above seven. Uh, he's done extremely well on all the other elements. Reinvesting is very poor, to be blunt. So uh, how I've done this is just a simple math sum. So we've got the uh, 45.96%, which is um, what he's gained in six months, in the last six months, 45.96%. And out of those, out of that 45.96%, he has closed 6.46%. So he's, he's closed 14% out of all his trades in six months. That's like a 1.4 but I'm not doing decimals on here. So I've rounded it up in his favor to a two. So that's how I've got that number. I don't want to narrow these seven elements down and compress them into one final score, if you like, because I'm already pigeonholing uh, traders enough already in this deep dive uh, mini series by categorizing them into seven, seven points. So I'm not, I'm not going to sort of squish it down even more. Um, especially since it would have to be weighted. So like the statistics section would be the highest quality one. Um, so, I mean, if I was going to compress it down, I would uh, weight the statistics like at 80% of the final grade. Um, but then again, you know, it's, it's subjective. You could argue that how I've done it, um, getting 80% a year gets you a high score, whereas 20% a year gets you a low score, whereas 20% is actually very good. So it's all very subjective. Um, which is why this is my uh, deep dive, the Moth Copy Trading deep dive. But yeah, those are my final scores for Jazzy. I'll be honest, when I, when I saw the, the reinvesting section, that how low it was, uh, I was very put off. And I thought, oh no, I might have to maybe change up again, change up the traders. But after going through all the other elements and you know recording the data, um, I am very impressed with the, the other six uh, elements. So. We'll definitely keep him for now and see how it goes. But yeah, I think that that, that about does it for Jazzy. Um, obviously, he's only started this year, so it's not a huge amount to compare with. But for a newcomer, I think he's 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 done very well. And um, twenty three copiers in the last seven days, so he's he's getting there fast. He's uh, someone to look out for. And thankfully, I have added them to my portfolio. So uh, I expect good things. As he says, it's not, um, it's no get rich quick scheme, <laughs> which I, I totally agree with and understand. But I'm hoping to see some good things in 2021 for Jazzy. Okay, that does it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And, uh, and enjoy the rest of the holidays. And have a, have a great, 
happy new year. Uh, fingers crossed that 2021 will be better than 2020. Take care, everyone.